this is a message I preached several years ago. And FYI, do y'all know that on 11-11, I forgot to look up the year if some of y'all know, this is when the Mayflower landed in America's shores. Did y'all know that? What a beautiful day. Who didn't know that? I'm learning my history like all over again. Also, this is when the men left um, New York to go secretly form the Federal Reserve on 11-11-19-10. Uh, we're interrupting the schemes of the enemy, guys, okay? We go to the enemy's camp and we back what he stole from us. Whatever. If he's messed with your money, if he's messed with your finances, your finance is the same thing. If he's messed with your health, if he's messed with your marriage, if he's messed with your children, you just go get them and get some more stuff and some more stuff. So this is a, this is a message. And um, the Lord's been dealing with me. And I had Pastor Amy to hold me accountable. And then I changed up some things. But he told me during the pandemic he wanted me to start leading worship some again. And I was like, oh, Lord, this is Rhonda who put the rule on people to put the in-ear monitors in, and they don't even stay in my ears. They fall out here. They fall out like a, like a church on fire falling in the Holy Ghost. Then things falling out here and everywhere, everywhere. And, um, and so I got that rule, and then I got out of the way, and then God brought it, Pastor Evan here. But he told me during the pandemic, so I thought, okay, I'll lead in young adults. That's my department. I'm like over this department. Give it up for the young married men in here tonight because they had to give up their room for baptism. <laughs> and so this my, that's my department. And um, then I changed the department because the Lord told me to. So then the instruction was they need to be in the 18 to 25 single group leading worship. So guess who didn't qualify? Me. <laughs> Barely, but I didn't. And um, so then... the. Uh, when I was in D.C. a few weeks ago, the Holy Spirit said, you need to hold yourself accountable again, Rhonda. I asked you to do this. So we're going to be going throwback probably next Wednesday night, holding the blood of Jesus. Stand against the enemy, holding blood of Jesus. And the Lord, I I'm just excited about just my simple little songs that you can remember the first time you heard them. That's how simple they are. Okay, so this is a life assignment to me. I wrote a book, the very first book, Pastor Amy put a demand on me. It's, who knows what the name of the book was? I should have been giving away awards. Prayer, a holy occupation. That's right. And guess what? I didn't even realize I wrote it on 222 when we were moving into this building. Go figure. Go God. And so I really believe that when Jesus said, you're going to be a house of prayer. He said, my father's house will be a house of prayer. He was very serious about it. So on my way into church tonight, the Lord reminded me of this. And y'all, Please, I, I don't know what's going to happen in our world except that Jesus Christ is on the throne. And he's never lost a battle and he won't now. And he's going to bring so many people. The greatest awakening is yet to come on our time. And so it's going to happen. And so we don't have the hee-haw anthem, guys. We're not gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark, depression, excessive misery. Y'all, we don't have that. We got hope in this earthen vessel. We've got hope. And so one of the things, and one of my favorite scriptures, and I wrote it out tonight so I didn't type it, so I'm going to put the cute little red glasses on for y'all for a minute. In Ephesians 4.30, and it says, The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ. He, until, you ex, until you experience your full salvation. So never, say never, never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted his holy influence in your life. Do y'all see that? Never grieve him. Have you grieved him before? Have I grieved him before? Yes, I have. But I make it a daily prayer, and, 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 and then I get so convicted. You know, I've I'm, I'm been married 38, it might be 39 years. It is 39 years, right? If I got married in 81, it's 39. And in 39 years, you can tell, I can tell when I've made my husband sad. I can tell. I have long hair, and it's not so cool to me at 58 now to have long hair. But guess what? My husband likes it, so I have it. And, but you can tell when you make somebody that you care about sad and you make them feel grieved, how much more the Holy Spirit, we should be that acquainted with him, right? All right, now am I in a frozen church tonight? No, oh, no, no, no. Come on, wake up. All right, so um, open your Bibles to Isaiah 56, 7. If not, I've turned in lots of scriptures into production. Um, that's one thing if you find out that in this church, the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. We like to do like two times ten. We like to do lots of scriptures. So write down the notes and get it. But in Isaiah 56, 7, I've cheated and written it out already. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy. Say joy. In my house of prayer, their burnt off no, that didn't sound right. They're burnt. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted 
on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Who is Jesus talking about right here? Who, who is Isaiah prophesying about? He's talking about the church. The church should genuinely, you and I are the church, not in the building. We're here to get filled up and then go out there and influence culture. Culture should not be influencing us. We should be influencing culture. And so it says, be called a house of prayer for all nations. So that under the old covenant, God's house was a building. It was very majestic, and it was built to specifications. And guess what? That third temple will get built again where the first two temples were. And you and I are responsible to continue to pray, like the Word of God says, for the peace of Jerusalem. That's what the Word tells us. There's one city in the Word of God we're called and asked to pray for, and that's it, okay? And so today, according to 1 Corinthians 3.16, it said, you are God's temple, His sanctuary, and God's Spirit has His permanent dwelling in you. And I wish that that would just be like forever, right? But today's proverb said, if the righteous are barely saved, what of the unrighteous? Y'all, you got to, righteousness means right standing with God. It's being in the position with God. And if something in my life doesn't line up, then I got to get in the book and get in the word of God and let that mirror show me. Like, see, tonight, um, and he, I think most of y'all know this, but some of y'all, um, you go to different campuses, so you may have not seen me before, but Pastor Brian puts on my false eyelashes for me. Isn't that sweet? Who knew that? Who didn't know that? And so he did them for me tonight, and I put my little glue in here. And Jordan and, and um, Pastor Tracy are coming down to go because May May is getting baptized, and she told Tracy she's her best friend, and she wants her to see her. So I'm walking past him, and all of a sudden, Tracy turns around and looks at me. She goes, um, Rhonda, um, your eyelash is doing something crazy. And Jordan had whispered it to her. And I, so she said, let's fix this. So we fixed it. I thought, and I get down, and I get to the children's check-in, and there's Amy Harrington and Jennifer Eastman, and Jennifer turned 50 on Tuesday. She's single, Monday. She's single, if any of y'all are God-fearing, and you like to go through me, I'll help you out. And, um, and then, so she tells me the eyelash is messed up, so I wiggle with it. Guess what happens after that? The whole eyelash comes off. Now, wouldn't that be cute tonight up here preaching to y'all with no eyelash on the right? But fortunately, I listened to the Holy Spirit, a little nudge, and he told me to put some glue in my, in, my, in my purse. So I put myself some glue in my purse, and my personal assistant, Kimberly, give it up for her, promptly put me some glue on. While I'm in here listening, guess what's being recorded, y'all, right now? And it's, it's coming out soon. Me and Pastor Amy are so excited. The God who frees me. Oh, isn't that great? And it sounds so good. Now, I want to just tell y'all, if you're in this house, and I, I, y'all just going to say, can we keep up with her? No, probably not, but it'll come back. It'll all connect in a little bit. If you go to church here, you're our spiritual children. Well, Evan, today's his birthday, and he has Keith Murray come in here, who is married to Holly Murray, who is the parents of Joshua and Caleb Murray. And we get blessed by their gifts. And Pastor Evan is wanting to show off. Caleb on the bass on this, on this song, and he's just like sliding into this and that, and he's just smiling, and Keith's smiling, and, and I thought about this. When you are a natural parent, and you want your kids to do so well, what is wrong with competition in the body of Christ? Y'all outrun me and Pastor Brian, because it makes us look good. You go reach more people for Jesus. Pastor Philip and Amy are our firstborn spiritual children, and I say, preach, baby, preach. Bring them to Jesus. Do it awesome. Y'all, you need to be cheering one another over to the finish line. So it's really cool. But so I'm in the studio, and Kimberly, um, got Madison Hildago got out her little flashlight on her phone, and we got this eye last year. So I don't know if it's climbing up the eye or not, but if it's distracting, you just close your eyes, okay? Some of y'all are at home, you're screenshotting me now and going to zoom in and see it. Here you go. And some of y'all are going, wow, Pastor Brian, he is like amazing. I don't even know like how he learned to do this, but it was just great one day. And I was like, I found out I didn't really want to put mascara on anymore. I don't have to put it on the bottom. It's like my beauty routine is about two minutes. And probably y'all are saying it shows. <laughs> Here it is, two minutes. We're good. And um, so, okay, let's, let's establish this. We are what God has and needs to get his work on earth done. Y'all know that? John Wesley said this. Kenneth Hagin repeated it multiple times, and now Rhonda Matthews says it a lot. It seems God can do nothing on the earth unless somebody prays. Y'all heard that? Everything God does on the earth is on a legal basis. Adam sold out the lease to Satan. And so we had to get Jesus bought it back. But unless you step into righteousness, you don't have any authority. 
And so you've got to take your position back, okay? So religion will migrate toward formulas, rules and regulations. And probably you're not very religious if you chose to go to church here. I probably would have thrown that thing out the ward about the first time you saw me. Me and Pastor Amy both. <laughs> They'll migrate toward formulas, rules, and regulations. You know, but the Holy Spirit can help you find out that prayer is simple, it is fun, and it is exciting. I love to pray. I love to pray. Now, if you're not called to pray as long as I am, everybody is called to pray. But everybody not, not have necessarily the specific mantle of prayer on their life like I do. But to me, oh, my goodness, I shut barn doors and all kinds of stuff. It's just like, whoo! And Pastor Brian gets me, and that's really cool, too. That was a special assignment. What are the qualities that God is looking for in his prayers? Ask me that, okay? What are the qualities? Very good. Come on, y'all communicate with me, okay? Well, I am so glad that y'all asked me, okay? James 5, 16. These are the qualities in the Amplified. In the latter part of James 5, 5 16, it says, The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer. You don't just pray it one time and go, okay, it didn't happen. Hakuna Matata. No, you may have to persevere, okay? Or you, but a prayer of faith is powerful, okay? But I'm going to just teach you some th different things tonight that he's spoken to me. The continued prayer of a righteous man makes, so you've got to be in righteousness, okay? You've got to be in a great position. If you're not in a good position with God, you might as well not pray. Because they're not going nowhere, okay? So don't waste your time. Okay, so the earnest, heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Tremendous power. We're going to do that in a little bit, okay? Dynamic in his working. So he tells you this is the kind of prayers he wants. He wants them heartfelt. You know, have you ever told your mate something like just systematic or the person, your kid, I love you. You're so cute. You look good today. Next day, I love you. You're so good. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be coming from the heart. And so God needs to hear from your heart. Okay, Pastor Philip, you got that thing slayed, baby. You talk to your wife fresh all the time. I love it. <laughs> he wants them to be continued, and you must be righteous. Rhonda's definition of righteous. Me and Pastor Philip, years and years ago, we were on Wilds Road. Who remembers Wilds Road? How many of y'all go back to Wilds Road? Tell them thank you for staying the course, okay? So we were on Wilds Road, and he and I both had a revelation of being righteous. And I used to introduce myself. I might start back again. Hi, I'm Rhonda Matthews, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How are you? Wouldn't that be good? Turn to your neighbor and tell him that's who you are. And say, I am the righteousness. No, confess that. That was good, KK. I did say it that way. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in an earth suit. Woo! Okay, that's good. Okay. And so um, it means right standing with God. Okay. I call that a good position with God. But what I'm really interested in is having tremendous power available in my prayer. How about you? I don't want to pray prayers that never get answered. I'm sorry I didn't see y'all over there. If y'all would have moved to the middle, I could see you there. <laughs> over there, guy. <laughs> sorry, I came in here a little early. I said, everybody, come on, scoot in the middle. You can still social distance if you want to. Hey, if you're online, hey, how are you doing tonight? Tell me hello, and I'll tell you hello back. Okay, so how do you learn to pray from your heart and not from your head? Say how. Okay, good. It will require you to be very honest. How many of y'all love honest people? Me too. Okay. You got to be really honest. That's good. Um, I do have a couple of spiritual daughters, Cherie and, um, and Tracy Hildago. Um, they love when I'm fasting because sometimes it's blunt will come on me. Because I'm naturally, me and Pastor Amy are like two of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. Thank you. Everybody else can say amen to me and Pastor Amy because we are sweet. And so... We, so when, but I want y'all to know I was fasting completely, a complete fast for seven days and now I'm on the Daniel because I'm believing God. I'm going to have that, that, that wisdom beyond 10 times more. But I felt like I was like super sweet and nobody could even tell I was fasting on Sunday. Who was that gateway Sunday? Did y'all feel like I was sweet? Okay, thank you. That's good. You didn't even know, did you, Sheree? You thought I had devoured a little food or something, didn't you? God. <laughs> and so, um, how do you learn to pray from your heart and not from your head? It requires you to be honest like Cherie likes. It requires you to be transparent with God. He knows you, so just get real with him, okay? When you're upset, you might as well tell him and then ask him to forgive you because he knows. And he loves to hear from you. When your child gets hurt or falls down or somebody hurt their feelings, though, they come tell you. Come talk to God. He loves that, okay? So all of us are bombarded in the soulless realm, okay? That is your mind and your will and your emotions. And I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know tonight, that part of you just don't get saved. 
Your spirit man gets saved, but that part of you just don't get saved. You've got to renew that mind. You've got to wash it in the water of the Word. You've got to maybe wear red a lot and remind you that the blood of Jesus will never lose its power, and you need a blood bath. You might, whatever you got to do to let God talk to you, you've got to get that soul. You've got to get it renewed, okay? So it's your mind and your will and your emotions. You could spend days praying from your head, but once you really locate your heart, that's the way you'll always want to pray. Tell the person next to you, say, that's the way I want to pray from my heart, okay? So here's the best way to develop heartfelt praying. You spend time in the Word of God. You cannot do this without the Word. You've got to. I confess every day when I put my full armor of God on, I thank you for the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and I say, I love the Word of God. I read the Word of God. I meditate the Word of God, and the Word of God gives me great success. Y'all, it's bound to catch up with you if you keep on confessing. You keep on believing the Word of God. And so Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God will divide asunder of your soul, your head, and your spirit, your heart. And it is the discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of your heart. It is the deepest part of our nature. The Word of God will convict you. Just like tonight, I didn't necessarily need um, to look in the mirror to see this eyelash because I had other people that were walking along with me and saw that I was a little out of order here. But if not, when I went to the restroom tonight and I looked in the mirror to get my red lipstick right, um, a few weeks ago, I'll tell y'all something funny. Pastor Tracy um, said, uh, Pastor Brian's got your lipstick on his chin now. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so Isaiah's wife, Cynthia, was taking photos, you know, getting them all that. And all of a sudden, I said, Pastor Tracy just texted me, and Pastor Brian's wearing my bright red lipstick right here, right now. <laughs> And Tracy's thinking about going to do this. Some I mean, of y'all think it's, it's tough in this ministry, guys, okay? If you're looking for real people, here we are. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, oh, no. Because he has this little handy, handy headset that I have never put on before, okay? But so we share the microphone between service. Pastor Philip, you might better watch out for that with you and Pastor Amy, too. And uh, we like our lipstick, guys. We do. And so I ran up between service, and I was like, babe, um, you need to wipe your chin. And fortunately, when he wiped it, nothing came off. And I was like, Shoo, praise the Lord. But it, it was there. We lost all the pictures. But God was good to me, so it wasn't so traumatic. So the last few weeks, um, as we get up to go, I wipe off the microphone. I clear it off so he, Pastor Brian's not wearing my lipstick. If y'all, anybody saw that that time? Some of y'all saw it. Don't say it, okay? All right. This has everything to do with prayer. <laughs> my Okay. Uh, okay, because okay, I could have looked in the mirror, and I would have seen eventually. that he, If he looked in the mirror, that wouldn't have been pretty for Rhonda between services, <laughs> realizing he was wearing my lipstick. <laughs> so the Word will help you get to your heart. The Amplified Version says, to the deepest part. I want God to not, I don't want to have one little private chamber hidden from God that he can't touch. I want whatever he needs to mess with, just mess with it, God. Because I don't want to spend eternity standing before him and go, hmm, God, I, I was really committed to this. I want him to convict me wherever I need. If, if, if ever I got out of my love walk, and my devotion today in my empowered um, devotion book was Satan's Weapon of Mass Destruction. It would do you great to read it. And if you can't afford to pay $10, you can go to the bookstore and I'll give you a copy. Say, Rhonda said, give it to me. I paid for it so I can give it to you. And, um, and it's talking about offenses. You cannot be offended with people and think that God's going to hear your prayers. Because Jesus said, when you stand praying, if you have anything, not like if they just they really deserved it, like they messed with you so bad. If you have anything against anybody, forgive so that your Father in heaven, yes, she's yelling now, can forgive you. So if you got something against somebody, you got to let it go. Let it go. You've got to let it go because it's going to stand between you and your prayers being answered, y'all. So John 7, 37 and 38, I like you over there. I'm going to preach you. You come over to the middle. John 7, 37, 38. He who believes in me, this is Jesus talking, as the scripture of the word has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously, say continuously, rivers of living water. I can't afford to have stagnant water coming out of me. You can't either. Don't waste one day of your life holding a grudge and getting out of love. Not one day, because that one day, it could be the day when somebody like as wicked as Osama bin Laden was. Y'all ever hear Ed Trout say, Rhonda, if you believed the devil would get saved, you'd pray for him. I said, you're right. I prayed for Osama bin Laden. I cried out to God. God, let somebody give him an opportunity. I have a revelation of the hell's forever. 
And I want you to not hate anybody so much so that they would miss heaven. I mean, you've got to ask God, give me something in my heart for humanity, for people, people that have done horrible stuff. God, Jesus was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You and I can say, wait, 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 wait. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. But Jesus set the example so you and I can obtain to this. This righteousness, we can do it, y'all. Say, I can do it. Okay, so I love a prayer river to flow. One thing, I've lived on water a lot of times of my life, and having lived on water, ponds and different lakes, sometimes the stream will be going, like blow, going like wide open. And then sometimes it will be really quiet. Sometimes it will be totally still, but it's still water. It's still water. And, and so I've noticed in my prayer places the Holy Spirit has a personality. Do you all know that? And he has a direction that he wants you to go and pray. Now, I love when he wants to laugh through me, don't you? Who, who's getting, just give it over to some holy laughter. Now, you can't fabricate, say, so we're going to turn on the laughter knob. You can't do that. But I love, I was listening to somebody the other day, and they were saying when you've prayed through sometimes, it's like all of a sudden, holy laughter hits, and you know you got your answer. Well, I love praying with my mom. Who's praying with my mom and the laughter thing came? And it's like, wow. Granny just went to this place. She's supposed to be watching. She's looking at another RV down the road. Hey, Mama. Hey, Henry. And um, I hope you're really watching. I hope you get a signal. And so when, when, when she laughs, it's kind of like, wow, we, we just got the yes from God. We got the victory. We prayed through. And so many times we want to rush in with our little prayer list, do our little thing, and come on out. And that God, he really is into marination. You know, if you ever had food that was marinated, wow, that thing tastes good. And you ever had food that came in the microwave? It, it was still food, but it was not near as good. And so God's really into marinating, and he's wanting to see. He's wanting to locate the body of Christ to see really what's in our heart, okay? And so um, you never go to God, and you, you, there's certain things you're going to pray. My armor of God pretty much is systematic. I do it this way. But you don't go to God in prayer and say, this is how we're going to pray today, God. No, you got to say, Holy Spirit, what would you like to pray about today? What's on your heart? And I'm so glad. In fact, tonight, if you don't have your prayer language or if it's been a bit since you prayed in the Spirit, guess what? We're going to pray you through because you need to be able to pray in the Holy Ghost because the Word of God said, I'll pray in the Spirit and I'll pray in the understanding. And so my understanding is a little limited sometimes. How about yours? And so when I don't understand, I'm like, God, I pray. And we just go and we have a good time. We just pray through. Okay, it's just good. We're going to do it in a minute. If we meditate the Word of God, the Word of God will keep you from getting drawn into an error. Okay, thank you so much over there. I, say, I want to preach to this one. The Word of God, they gave me a word a few weeks ago, and I want you all to write it down for me because I love it. And the Word of God, uh, it'll sanctify, but I love it. John 17, 17, woo, bingo. God is winner, 17 victory. <laughs> and it says, sanctify them. This is Jesus talking. By the truth, thy word is truth. All right, get this. Let's all, let's do a memory verse. Say John 17, 17. Y'all sounding good. Sanctify them by the truth. Thy word is truth. Y'all, it's truth. He won't change it for anybody. He sticks by it. And if he said, if the righteous are barely saved and what of the unrighteous, then you and I need to make sure Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. I want to make sure I'm going to make it. I don't want to think I've done all this, been a preacher's wife, done all this. Hey, Logan, and done all these things. <laughs> he just peeked in at me here. I Don't y'all love hearing Logan? I like to use his gifts in the call because he knows he's called a pastor, and he's got him a beautiful wife that they got the nations in their heart too. Okay, so we sanctify them by the truth. Let's try it one more time. John 17, 17. Sanctify them. By the truth, thy word is truth. Now, Jesus is talking about get his disciples sanctified by the truth. We need to get washed by the truth of God's word. When I wrote that little simple song years ago, this country was founded on the truth of God's word. Today, when they came, they went through so much to get to this nation, to get here and to fight for us to be able to have a Bible, to be able to pray, to not have to go underground. Don't let the enemy talk you out of your authority in your place of prayer, okay? All right, so if you begin to understand, say, I'm a three-part being. What are you? I'm a spirit. I'm a soul. 
and a body. Well, I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. I want this body to be decreasing a little bit more. And it's going to pretty soon. I look at my husband's body. I'm like, wow. I mean, excuse me, that was not nice. But I'm like, the discipline, that di- I didn't mean that the way that sounded, guys. I promise. The discipline he's had in his physical body. Some of y'all got husbands like that too. Okay. But you know what? More than that, he's very disciplined in the spirit. I listen to him pray. I hear him pray. I heard him crying out to God. Mr. Leonard Zimmerman is in surgery right now. Let's stop and pray for him right now too. Father, we just cover Leonard. God, we thank you for a great report, a supernatural recovery for Leonard. Lord God, I love that when this is my testimony, if I'm not dead, then you're not done. And God, I thank you that he has such a strong spirit. He has a great family support group. And God, you've given those doctors such a spirit of wisdom. And I thank you for the strength over Nona, over his children, over his grandchildren in the name of Jesus. We hold up J.J. Nolly. Lord God, we thank you that he has a strong spirit that is sustaining him in bodily illness. We hold up the newest baby that was born on, on, on the day Amy Coney Barrett was, was, was confirmed. And de Havilland gave us a prophetic word that when, when Ray and Malin's newest baby was born, it would be a sign to this church. We hold up David Ruiz. I always call it Ruiz, guys. My, my Spanish is good. We hold him up. We hold the blood of Jesus and the team, Lord God. And we say that everything in his body responds to the word of God. And David, you are a sign and we, we hold you up. And anybody else in our church, Lord God, body that's going through a physical attack, a spiritual attack, a mental attack, whatever it is, God, we thank you for the doctors and the nurses that are caring, Lord God, that have the heartbeat for Almighty God. Thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I just felt led to, if you're a doctor, nurse in the medical arena, stand up. I want to pray for y'all a moment. If you're in the medical field, I want to pray for you. The Holy Spirit just put that in my heart. Any medical field tonight, if you're around them, I want you to point your hands toward them. Father, thank you. God, on this Veterans Day, God, that we've been able to honor the, the military tonight and those who've served past, present. And God, these, Lord God, who put their life on the line in the most unique times of life during the pandemic. God, thank you for them. God, I ask you to visit them in ways, Lord God, minister to them in the strength, God. Thank you so much, Father God, for those you told me years ago we'd have some kind of medical clinic coming out of this house. Pastor Amy and Leslie's mom was a nurse, and she would always pray about that, and I believe she's on the other side as a great cloud of witnesses, being able to look down and see all these medical people. God, I thank you for the favor of God, the favor of God, the open doors that no man can shut for them, and the shut doors that no man can open. And God, I thank you as they attend to patients, Lord God, that they have they have the freedom fruit of the spirit of patience in their life, Lord God, and the love, and God, that they are the hand of Jesus extended to people that that come across their path. And I thank you, Father, that in this season, there's going to be an unusual amount of favor on the medical people out of this church. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. And tell one of them, thank you. Say, thank you for doing what you do. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. We need to celebrate people. That's what's too much. I I said the other day to Regina Lane, we were having a good time, but, and, um, and to Lauren Looney, we were talking about this. I grew up, and I said, you remember this song, Lauren? He said, yeah, I'm 64. Of course I do. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Remember that song? Any of y'all that old enough for that? We can, it's the only thing there's just too little of. We got to have that love, okay? All right, so we're three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, God is three parts. God what? God the Father, God the, and God the, y'all are such wise people here on Wednesday nights. So, okay, let's talk about our spirit man. In prayer, you contact spirit to spirit. Did you know that? You do. And it's so much fun and it's so exciting. If, how many of y'all keep prayer journals? Mm, we're going to need to let's step that up a bit, people, okay? Because when you keep one, you're expecting him to talk to you. You believe in God, you told me this today, and I write it down, and it, it happened, and, and, and I pray in other tongues, and if you've never heard that, you're liable to hear me and Pastor Amy a little bit tonight. When I pray in other tongues, many times I pray in English. Have anybody heard me do that before? That's how Aruba became an assignment to me on a Tuesday prayer in 2004. And the Word of God's clear. If you need scriptures, I can give them to you. But it says even in, in Acts chapter 2, and it heard them speak. They had different people in Jerusalem, and they began to hear them speaking in other tongues, but they heard their own languages. You know that. And so you can't make yourself do this. Um, one time Karen Ham was with us in Russia, and she began to pray in other tongues just while we were praying for the team of people. And the lady in front of her began to weep. And through the interpreter, she said, you just, she looked at us, and she said she just told her how to be born again in Russian. Isn't that beautiful? God is so big. Let's not limit the Holy One of Israel, okay? Let's just not. It's a big deal. And so this lady got born again because somebody prayed in tongues. You just don't even know what you're doing sometimes. It's amazing. Um, 
So when you begin to develop a sensitivity in your own spirit to the Holy Spirit, you won't have to wonder how is the, sp- the river going to flow today, okay? You just go in prayer, and the Holy Spirit will orchestrate all the desires He has, okay? Earlier, I looked at James 5, 16, and this is really important to me about a heartfelt, continued prayer. But look at James 5, 17 and 18. And this is the kind of example of praying that Elijah did. Verse 17 says, he was a human being with a nature like us. A lot of people go, well, he was a prophet. No, the Bible made it real clear. He had a nature like we did, and he prayed. And he, come on, somebody, and he prayed. It is not optional for a Christian if we're God's house of prayer. And so, so and he prayed, and he, and he was a human being like us, and he prayed. We all qualify to pray. But this takes our excuses out of the way, okay, because he prayed. So in the Old Testament, I want to tell you all about what James was talking about. In 1 Kings chapter 18, 41 through 45. So the prophet Elijah, he says, he declares the rain in verse 41 to Ahab. Verse 42, he goes to Carmel, Mount Carmel, and he bows himself down upon the earth, and he puts his face between his knees. Verse 43, the servant comes back, and he says, oh, there's nothing. How many would have, would have just said, okay, well, I guess it's not happening. Now, I want to tell you all something I did the other day. Um, in 2007, I had taken a group of young people to Whirl in the Water. Have any of y'all ever been there in Charleston, South Carolina? I met a sweet little beautiful girl named Charleston and I. Charleston's parents, wave your hand. In. There you go. And uh, she said, well, he's Charleston. I was like, oh, that's a sign to me. And um, so I was at Whirling Water. And I heard the Spirit of God tell me something so clear in my spirit. It wasn't an audible voice, but it was so loud in my spirit. I want to take you to places off the beaten path. And so I heard that. And so on Friday morning, I heard the Lord tell me on Thursday night, Rhonda, if I'm really yours to command, when I ask you to get up and go, then you just get up and go. I gave you the husband who understands you and lets you go. And, and so many times he goes with me in places. So I, I got up and um, I got up to go and... Um, I was just laying there, and Laura Daniels had sent me a text, and she said, hey, my devotion from Joyce Meyer today said that, um, hey, Gary, look on Hannah's desk, because she's printed me something today, but I failed to find out where she printed it at, maybe on the counter. And so she said, um, my devotion today was about going off the beaten path. I know you had a word. She said, do you know much about those guidestones in Elberton, Georgia? Who's been there before? Don't go unless he sends you. It's gross. It's just gross. And I was just stunned. And I didn't know anything about them until Amy Cook was going through, I guess, were you on your way to get granite or something with your husband? So her husband's a builder. And so I'm assuming so on um, October the 14th, she sent me a text and she said, you know anything about these guide stones? Now, I want y'all to know you have the Holy Spirit. He's the guide on the inside. Okay, say, I got a God stone inside of me. I got, the, I got the God, not a God stone. I got the God inside of me, okay? okay somebody get say, I got the God inside of me. That's the Holy Spirit. And so nobody even knows who put this up except some banker. And I think that's pretty interesting because my Bible tells me the wealth of the wicked is transferred. Coming soon. You'll be depleted if you're wicked with your wealth. And it, God said it. I've been waging a warfare just like Daniel said. God, in 70 years, they're coming out. He found it. And you, here we are in the time where that transfer is coming. It's only going to come in the hands of people who know what to do with it. It's me. God, um, you look no further. Here I am, Lord. And so I went to these things with these guide stones. And, and I had had a dream. And Kimberly Fagan had gone in on my notes. And K.K. Souter, not, not, a few years ago, felt led of the Lord to go in on my notes where I prayed to make me journals, digital journals. So it's kind of fun. And some of my prints this big. So the notebooks are this big. Just maybe this big. And um, so I was noticing one on, uh, last week. And it talked about um, this particular thing in a Civil War character and all these different things. And camouflage turned into orange vehicle. And it was pretty interesting. So we arrive and we go to the Walmart. Every good town has a Walmart, right? And we go to Walmart and there's a camouflage vehicle that's in front of us pulled in and pulled out before I left. And then we drive up to the Guidestones and there is a bright orange Porsche. Bright orange convertible Porsche. And it was Kendall's first mystery day with me. Like, well, not first, but in a long time. And um, so Laura had texted me that day, and she said, hey, my devotion said go off the beaten path. And so we met at Pollard's Corner, and she put in the time to get there from Pollard's Corner. Y'all want to know? No, let's go. Pastor Brian's number. Let's try that one, guys. 
one, one, one. It was one hour and 11 minutes. So I knew he's on a Holy Ghost assignment. May the Lord make you a thousand times greater, Deuteronomy 111. So we get there, and we drive up, and there's this bright orange Porsche. And y'all might think that I talk to everybody. I do at church. But I really try to find out if people are open or closed. Y'all know that? Sometimes your words just are, like, in vain. But so I got it, and I started. I was like, hey, how y'all doing? Like your car. But I was like, bullseye, orange vehicle. Yes, we just saw a camouflage one. Now this is orange. This must be part of my assignment. Let me talk. How are y'all? And so it was an older gentleman, and he could have been an angel. But it was so wild because he starts telling me that he and his wife had taken this trip today. And they had lived across. And they said, where are you from? I said, Augusta, Georgia. And they're like, oh, we live across the river. And I'm like, river? Yes. <laughs> okay, you might be oversaved if you're looking for the river anytime. And um, so he's just kept on talking. I'm not oversaved, guys. Okay, you can't be too saved. Thank you. So he just kept on talking to me. They were where they were supposed to be, right? Thanks. That's great. So he just kept on talking to, to us. And he said, I tell you what you girls need to do. And I was thinking, well. Let's just listen. You got an orange vehicle. My dream that I forgot I had in 2017 just showed up in a notebook that Kimberly ran off for me. And it was like, bing, 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 pick me up. And so the man said, you need to go where this, these, this massacre is called the Long Cane Massacre. It's over there in Troy, South Carolina. I'm like, well, how far is that? And he said, well, it's about a little ways away from here, but you need to go. He said, because... They go in there, and they pay tribute to the dead, and they put these coins. Well, I knew I'd been praying in tongues and heard a few other people recently praying quarter, quarter, quarter. And I'm thinking, coins, there must be some quarters there. I need to go. You know what? Guess what my husband and Carter did last week? They watched the National Treasure. Who's watched that before? I told Brian, I said, you know, we got next level treasure right here in the spirit with me. He said, I know. He said, that national treasure ain't got nothing on you, Rhonda. So, so they, 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 I inspired him to watch it when he, we went out. And so we're there. And so he tells me, you need to go through to this place. So I'm like, okay. So we write, Laura writes down the details, how we get there. And he's like, you go here, and then you get into the blink and caution light, and you take a left, and then you turn down this dirt road, and you go a long ways, and you go still a long ways further, and then you're going to turn left, and it's going to look like nothing's there, and it's going to say no trespass. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I don't want to get, like, in trouble. He said, but it ain't talking to you. It's talking to hunters. I'm like, all right, Good. <laughs> So I'm like, I'm here we go. Woo, y'all on a good adventure with Rhonda. Y'all love to pray with me, right? And so, so we do that. But then I walk in to these guide stones, and nobody was there but this orange vehicle. And I knew that was a word from the Lord for me somewhere that God had was very intentional for me to show up at. And so I go into these guide stones, and I'm stunned. You feel pure evil. It's written in several languages, but this is what it says. And it's in Elberton, Georgia. It's in the state of Georgia. We are in the state of Georgia, and we are not going to allow this kind of junk to be on our watch. It is ridiculous that, that, that the, the new age or whatever age it is is just saying this stuff. But this is what it says on the stones, and it's crazy. It says, the Georgia Godstones. The, George, the story of the Georgia Godstones began in June 1979. I graduated in 79. When a stranger identified himself as Mr. Christian. Well, you know what? He's going to say some things about him, but ain't real Christian-like, okay? He identified himself as Mr. Christian, later called R.C. Christian. He visited Joe H. Finley Sr., president of Elberton Granite Finishing Company, and he indicated that he represented a group of loyal Americans living outside of the state of Georgia who wanted to build a monument focused on the theme of conservation. Mr. Christian, who had assumed this pseudo name, and I don't know if I said that right, pseudonym, because he was a Christian, right, named Wyatt Martin, president of the Granite City Bank, an intermediary to hold funds in escrow anonymous forever. He had selected Georgia because of its excellent granite, its mild climate, and the heritage of his great-grandmother, a native Georgian. Christian agreed to Martin's request to locate the monument in Elbert County if there was a suitable remote site for it, which they found on a hillside. Now, I know my Savior went to a hillside. And it don't compare to anything the devil tries to do. On a hillside, somebody needs to get excited about that. In, in Elbert County, on the farm of Mildred and Wayne Mulex, north of Elberton on Highway 77, Fendler's company carved this six-point part monument from pyramid blue granite. The Georgia Guidestone consists of four granite megaliths set in a paddle wheel arrangement around the central stone, which is surrounded by a flat capstone. And it tells you all the feet that it measures. And it tells you... 
that these features the statement of cautionary guidance to humankind translated into Babylonian, kunis sephirim, or however you say that word, classical Greek, Sanskrit, Egyptian hieroglyphics, and to let these be guide stones to reason. Below the guidelines are carved into eight faces of the four outer stones in English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindu, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. And this is what these guide stones say. Now, this didn't print off really good, so I'm going to show, hopefully, right here you can be able to see it. Now, this says this right here. This is talking about us, y'all. Maintain humanity under 500 million. In perplexity, ba in perpetual balance with nature, guide reproduction wisely, improve in fitness and diversity, unite humanity with a living new language, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason, Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. And that sounds kind of good there. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with your social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Do not be a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Last time I checked, all of creation itself is awaiting you and I, the manifestation of the sons of God. This is written up here, and nobody seems to care. The Federal Reserve was secretly formed by the wealthiest people. One-sixth of the world was also in Georgia. Do we know what's happened in our state? Do we even care about the state of our state? All of a sudden, when the Spirit of God begins to nudge me, we got to get up and repent for iniquitous patterns that have been in the state of Georgia. So this man tells me that, and then we start to go, and Laura puts into her GPS, and we're on our way to Troy, South Carolina. But guess where we had to go through? I'm glad you said what back there. That was great. Mount Carmel. I'm like, oh, Holy Spirit, you are amazing. We go through Mount Carmel. I'm like, we're going to sit down here. We're going to pray in Mount Carmel. So we just drive up to the Mount Carmel Cemetery. And the, the first graves we begin to see, even with graves open, they were a whole family called Coven. Hmm. Hmm. In Mount Carmel. Pastor Philip said, yeah, there was a prophet that called down fire. And there were some dead 400 prophets. It's time for the almighty God be on the inside of us. If God is God, then choose God. And if Baal is Baal, then get on his side. If you're going to go to hell, go with gusto. That's just the truth. The body of Christ cannot have gray. We absolutely cannot have gray. And you've got to keep your love. So we go through this place, y'all. It was amazing. And I end up in this address where it tells us that we've arrived at this massacre. And I'm, I just wheeled into their yard. And the man was wearing camouflage. So I said, hey, how you doing? And he, I said, you hunting? He said, no, just wear this shirt. And I was like, well, that's cool. What's your name? He said, Mr. McDonald. And I said, oh, I was praying old McDonald had a farm. God told me to pay close attention to the nursery rhymes and the riddles and stuff. And so I just say, e -I -E -I -O. and he's like, he liked. And then the 75-year-old gentleman got out, and they started talking. I said, hey, are you, a, are, you, are you a Christian? He said, nope, I'm not a Christian. I said, you don't know that Jesus loves you? He said, yeah, I know he loves me, but I like to drink, and I drink every day. I said, but he loves you. So then I see this strange, like, tree made out of bottles. It's called a hoodoo tree. Hoodoo. And I said, what in the world is that? And they're like, everybody around here has these trees. And I'm thinking, what would you make them out of? They said, beer bottles. So I started singing the old child song, which I shouldn't have done. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> Y'all know it? I did. And they sang along with me. So then I'm like, how do we get to this place? Because I got to go get these coins. And four of the quarters, y'all, had rivers on them. I'm so excited. I, w I wish I had show and tell. I'll preach another time and show you show and tell. And one of them said, the river of no return. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. We got an innermost being river coming out of us, and it ain't got no return. As long as you're breathing, we, pray we still praying. So it was wild. So those guys, they ended up leave leading us to this place, which we never found. God's got secret agents for you all along the way if you just will obey him. Now, I checked my spirit. He was 75. He said, I ain't really comfortable leaving no women in the woods. I said, oh, we got the Holy Ghost. You can go on. It's good. We, we got new business over here and repent for any land we took from the Indians and take some pictures of the quarters and put them back. <laughs> so it's really cool. So Elijah did all that, and I was there. Elijah was persistent, and he kept saying to his servant, you go look again, you go look again. Seven times, that's continued prayer. Verse 44, 45, his prayer got results. Now bring it back to the Luke New Testament. That's where I'm going to shut up, and we'll pray a minute. Luke 11, 1, then he was praying. Somebody find me Pastor Amy back because she's who I need to start praying. Then he was praying. Guess what? Jesus was praying. If Jesus was the Son of God, I heard somebody tell me recently they didn't need to pray. What? 
If Jesus was the Son of God, you need to pray. Tell your neighbor you need to pray. He was, Jesus, he was the Son of God. He was praying, and it was necessary for him to pray. It wasn't optional for God's Son to pray. Do you think it should be optional for you? And in Luke 11, 1, Jesus' disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. All of us can quote it. It's known to us as what? The Lord's Prayer. But there's another part in, the, in verse 8. It says, I say, though he will not rise and give him because he's his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as much as he needs. Now, I'm reading the King James one day, and I'm thinking, did they misspell the word important? Anybody else thought that before? I remember I was preaching at a prayer conference. They, uh, they must have, like, accidentally misspelled important. And the Lord said, no, Rhonda, you need to search this thing out. You just, it's time for me to show you what this word means. So the word importunity jumped out at me. And in the Amplified of verse 8, importunity says, because of his shameless persistence, and insistence. It's kind of like, I won't let you go until you bless me. And it, it, don't ask God whose side is he on, the red or the blue. He is here to take over, guys. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he needs you and I to get on his side, okay? Get on his side. So John 15, 14, Jesus calls us friends if we do what he commands us to do. So I just want you all to know in Luke eleven nine 9, it says, I say, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock, come on, Pastor Amy, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, he receives. He who seeks, find. And to him who knocks on the door, it will be open. I want y'all to stand up and get ready. Let's do some knocking, okay? Thanks for joining us today on the New Life Everyday YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to receive the latest messages from Pastor Brian and the New Life team. If you enjoyed today's message, be sure to share this video with a friend. To learn more about us, visit our website, newlifeeveryday.com. Again, thanks for watching. God bless.